What's up everyone? Welcome to the video. We're here breaking down the Verizon 200 at the Indy Road Course for Sunday, August 13th around 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And yes, the time has come. We are finally back at the Indy Road Course and I have plenty of flashbacks from this track because a lot of bad things have happened here for me and I'm sure most of you as well. It's been lots of experiences so far. The inaugural race, we saw the track explode. The guy in the suit had to come out and try to fix it. We saw half the field get wrecked out because of like the ramp or whatever it was. It just absolute chaos any Hamlin chase briscoe fiasco at the end as well which led to aj allmendinger winning the race then last year we saw ross chastain take a shortcut to meet tyler reddick at the front of the field and we saw more wrecks before and after that so it's just been uh quite the time here at indy i'm hoping it's a little bit less chaotic this time around they did change the restart zone so hopefully it's not just a big pile up and wreck fest and turn one like it always is but it's probably just hoping for the best i'm sure it'll still be a little bit messy but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But anyway, this is your first time here. What's up? My name is Chris Pinelli. I break down NASCAR DFS each and every single week on this channel. You'll also find me live on Sunday mornings, breaking down the entire slate, answering any questions you guys may end up having, playing on around noon or one o'clock Eastern. So hopefully I will see you all there. And if you do end up enjoying today's free content, or even if you don't, the one thing I ask in return, if you can leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so, and feel free to leave a comment down below. Be nice, be mean, tell me I'm ugly. I don't really care either way, but I'd love to hear from you. And really quick, I do have to sell it a bit here. Sorry, but not really because I do make these videos possible. But price picks an underdog. Promo code CPEM will get you a deposit match bonus up to $100 on either site using the link down below in the description or the pinned comment. Super fun to play on. Do it each and every single day and week. And also, Underdog is your place to go for best ball tournaments. They have massive prizes with best ball mania, weekly winners, and much, much more. And football is approaching very soon, less than four weeks away. So I highly recommend you going in there, taking advantage of the deal that they're offering, and load up on some drafts. All right, so moving on to the strategy portion here, it's not going to be anything too crazy for the Indy Road Course, just your typical road course type builds. We only have 82 laps. You take 70% of that. That's just under 60 total dominator points. Subtract even more because of yellows and cautions and however many wrecks we get. We're probably looking at around 50 dominator points to hand out. So really not that much. So you're pretty much looking at one main lap leader in your lineup. Although at the same time, you don't really even have to focus on dominators. I would kind of just say zero to one. But this is not a week where you make dominator groups because while I am rostering guys up front, I'm not really rostering them because they can dominate. I just want them because I think they can finish high. And if they do happen to dominate, then it's just icing on the cake. But at road courses, you see different strategies play out, so can't really expect anyone to lead the entire race. So really the main focus this week is on guys with finishing position potential and place differential upside. Now, I will say it's pretty tough to pass at the road courses, and if you're starting near the front, you're pretty much the best cars in the track, and you're going to be able to hold that track position. Now, there's going to be a couple outliers. Not everyone's going to start exactly where they finish. So we got like William Byron in the very back, Kevin Harvick's in the back, Eric Jones is in the very back. So there's definitely some names with place differential upside. But you do need to be careful because it is kind of tough to pass at road courses and without the guaranteed state cautions anymore, it's harder to flip the field and change strategy and things like that. So if it is long and drawn out, these guys are going to be stuck back there for quite some time. But at Indy, I feel like we're kind of guaranteed a few yellows. We did see him practice some guys spinning and whatnot. So I feel like it'll happen eventually. But just something to be careful. Don't go too heavy on the place differential because pretty much, for the most part, all the good cars are up front anyway. And finally, moving on to the driver by driver breakdown here, I do have to mention one thing first, and that is Patreon offering free week trials. So when I come in, check out all the extra content, projections, optimizer, ownership projections, simulation scores, the Discord, and much, much more. Links down below in the description or the pinned comment for that. And no strings attached, completely free. And if you like it, you can stay. If not, tell me to kick rocks. I don't really care either way, but I do think you'll like it. All right, so let's dive right into it here. This is my first time running through the entire slate. So just first initial reactions with you all. And the more updated stuff will be on the live stream tomorrow and the Patreon later today. And these are not the most updated odds. These are pre P and Q. And just want to give a shout out to NASCAR for completely screwing up practice this week. We do not have much data to work with whatsoever. They did post a PDF file for the single lap and the 10 lap runs but cannot find lap by lap data anywhere, can't find the five lap, and just overall they didn't have it on the app or the website either way during practice. So absolutely sucks this week. I don't know what happened, but not too happy about it because I want all the data that I can get. And unfortunately, that is not what I have this weekend. So I'll try to make do with the limited data that we have, but just know if stuff is missing this week, that is the reason why. There's just nothing I can do about it. But anyway, let's dive into it here. We'll start up top with the man, Martin Truex Jr., 10-5 on DK, 14 on Fandle. He's starting in 12th. And he opened up as the odds on favorite at four to one, which I thought was a bit steep. Probably going to go up since he qualified outside the top 10. And if you're looking at Christopher Bell on up here, all these guys qualified a little bit better. So I think the odds will shift a little bit. But with him qualifying outside of the top 10, I think that makes him probably the number one cash game option. 
of this bunch just because he's going to offer a little bit more floor than just about everybody else. And with how good he's been this year, just about everywhere, I have a hard time seeing Truex not be a top five, top 10 contender here. So I do think he makes quite a bit of sense here. I think most projection systems will like him the most of the 9 and 10K drivers. Does have the most dominant points at road courses this year. Was amazing at Sonoma. Really good at the Chicago Street course before the end. And at Coda, started in the back of the pack, worked his way back up. Finished a little bit worse than where he was running the majority of the day, so I'll give him a pass there. But Marty T, do think he's probably the best cash game option. Now, I've not yet in projections, ownership, or sims, or anything like that, so I can't say for certain. But my assumption is, as of right now, Truex will project pretty well. And then we have Tyler Reddick, arguably the best road course racer in the series right now, especially since the induction of the next-gen car. But 10-3 on DK, 13 on Fandle. He's starting in the front row with Daniel Suarez. And while some of the numbers at road courses this year don't look amazing, we're talking 10 point on DraftKings points per race with an average finish of 20th, just because he's had some issues at some races like Chicago Street Course where he started near the front and then along with Truex and Christopher Bell got killed at the end. But if you look past that, I mean, the guy's just been incredible. He won at Coda, dominated that race. He won the Indy Road Course last year. He's got the second most dominant points only behind Truex this season at road courses. So if you're looking for the pivot off of Truex in tournaments, I do like Tyler Reddick quite a bit here. Starting in the front row, a lot of people probably flocked to Daniel Suarez. Deservedly so. He's starting on the pole and he's cheap, and he looks like he's got an amazing car. But I do like Reddick here. I think you can play them both together, talking about Daniel Suarez just because of how cheap he is. But Reddick's playable in all formats, and I mean, you just have to play on the road courses. That's how good he's been at the next gen car so far. I mean, if we expand this to a eight race sample size, I know he was on a different team last year, but that's definitely transferred over to Toyota. And Toyota was awful road courses last year, which makes it even more impressive. But he's got two wins, three top fives, and just some overall very good numbers. Shane Van Gisbergen, who won the Chicago Street Course, I saw a stat that he owns like 30% of the handle at BetMGM right now, which is absolutely insane. Like I think he's going to run well, but I don't think he's going to run that well. That's absolutely insane. I don't think he's going to win the race this weekend. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he won, but I don't think it's likely as a lot of betters think as of right now. Like He was on a pretty even playing field at the Chicago Street Course, because that's kind of his thing, street courses. That's what he's good at, and no one else has been there before. So he's getting the same amount of track time as everybody else, and that was a big advantage for him. Now we're at the Indy Road Course, and he even said it himself. These other guys have a lot more data than he does, a lot more experience. So he said it's going to be a lot more difficult than the Chicago Street Course, which I can definitely agree on. Now, he was still fast. He was eighth in qualifying. And if we pull up practice, which, again, we do not have much practice data to work with, so... I don't want to look at it too much and get too caught up into it, but we did see him P12 in the one lap. Did improve upon that in qualifying, which makes sense after getting some more laps down. He's a fine tournament play, but as of right now, I would prefer Redick or Truex. I just feel a little bit more comfortable with them. And then we have Chase Elliott, who really needs to punch his ticket into the playoffs because he's not going to be able to point his way in, especially after wrecking last weekend. But he comes in at 10K on DK, 13.5 on Fandle. He's starting in third. He is pretty much a direct pivot off of Tyler Redick. I don't really like playing them both together, but... I think he'll be lower owned than Tyler Reddick, but he's got to have the punches ticket here. And he's got two really good tracks coming for him because they're both road courses. I mean, all good he is at road courses. I know a lot of people say he's pretty much fallen off. Like in Gen 6, he was winning almost every single road course race. Hasn't really been the case in the next gen car, but that's not to say he's not been good at them. Like he has been really, really strong at these road courses still. Has the most top fives, has six top tens, and actually has the most dollar points, even more than Tyler Reddick, more than Martin Truex Jr., more than Daniel Suarez. Like, he has been just fine at road courses, just the wins haven't been there, which can always be a bit fluky and not tell the entire story. So I think Elliott's a fine tournament play, and if you're going with the narrative that he's going to have to get his win and NASCAR is going to rig it for him, <laughs> sure, go for it. But I'm going to play him just because he's good at road courses. The other stuff doesn't really matter, but it does make a, make you feel a little bit better when you roster him. And coming up in the 9K range here, we have Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell. I'm going to make things easy here. I'm just going to say they're pretty much the same play. And honestly, you can say that from Tyler Reddick on down until we hit AJ Allmendinger. He's going to offer a lot more place differential. But these guys are starting 5, 6, 7. They're about the same price tag. Obviously, pretty much just as fast in practice and qualifying. Now, if you're looking at practice, there is a little bit of discrepancy here on a couple guys, like Bush is 16th, but then Larson's second, Chris Rebell is 6th. I guess if I had to pick my favorite, it would be Kyle Larson. But honestly, this is a mix and match approach here. Throw Chase Elliott, Shane, all in the same category here, just all in one bucket. Mix and match them and really hope for the best. I just don't really see how you can say that one's way better of a play than the other. So I would say Larson's my favorite of this group, but... Again, we are splitting hairs here, and I will probably have very similar exposure on each and every single one. Dropping down to AJ Allmendinger, 9300 bucks. He's starting all the way back in 26, one of the best road course racers out there. He's teetering on the line for the playoffs, so he definitely has the punches ticket. 
But starting all the way to this far back, for as good of a road course racer as he is, and a former winner at the Indy Road Course, hard not to like him. And I think a lot of people will start their lineups in cash games, specifically with guys like Martin Truex Jr., AJ Allmendinger, Denny Hamlin, William Byron, just because they offer a ton of place differential. And we have seen how chaotic this track can be. Chris Buescher is kind of sandwiched in between that chalk PD sandwich. He still offers you place differential upside, but when you have guys like AJ Allmendinger, Denny Hamlin, William Byron, all starting really far back, and he's not going to have quite the name value. I know he won two weeks in a row, but definitely still doesn't have the name power. Some of these other guys are road courses, but Busher, I mean, he's an excellent road course racer himself. If you're looking at the three races we've been at this year, 7.3 average finish inside the top 10 each and every single time, averaging the third most DraftKings points per race. I know he wasn't super fast in practice, but starting in 17th, it's hard to view him as a non-top 10 contender. So definitely think you have to get exposure to Busher. And with him being more expensive than he normally is, I think that just leads to even lower ownership as well. So I definitely do not mind Chris Busher at all. Because, I mean, when you see Denny Hamlin at $9,000 with a lot of place differential, he's just going to be higher around. That's just how it is. And I do like Denny Hamlin. He's going to project pretty well for me. But I'm just looking at an ownership perspective. Really hard not to like Chris Busher. Hamlin, another just chalky PD play, pretty similar to AJ Allmendinger, although he's not quite as good at road courses as he is. But the Toyotas have definitely been very strong and have had a lot of speed at them so far this year. Dropping down to the 8K range, we have William Byron at $8,900. And he is free on Fandle at $8,200. He's starting in 39th. And I know what you're probably thinking, slam dunk, auto play, lock him 100% in your lineups. And while it looks good on paper, please keep in mind those other factors at play here. He did fail tech three times, so he didn't get to qualify. And not only that, he has to serve a pass-through penalty at the beginning of the race. So he's not going to go lap down because it's a road course, but he's definitely going to be away from the pack. So he's going to need a yellow at some point, which I'm assuming we're going to get at Indy. It's not like it's going to run green the entire time, I don't think. And I'm not getting the guaranteed stage caution, so that's not going to save him. But he'll be on the lead lap. It's just a matter of when do we get a yellow, and then he'll get bunched back up. So I still think he's going to be fine. And he's been good at the road courses this year. I believe he's been in the top 15 every single time. Average finish of around 10th place. And he was fast in practice, too. So he's got a good car, and the other Hendrick cars look pretty good. Bowman's fast, Larson's fast, Chase Elliott's fast. So I'm not overly concerned about it. So as long as he can get that caution, he should be good to go. And if you're playing cash games, I mean, you, you pretty much have to play him. You're getting a top 10 car speed-wise in practice, starting in 39th. I don't think he's going to be stuck there the entire race. Then we have Kostecki here in 11th. He had quite the eventful practice in qualifying. He had some power issues at the beginning of practice. And as you can see, P38 in the one lap. Then qualifying, got a couple good laps down. They ended up hitting the wall. Not sure how bad the damage was. I don't know if he's going to have to go to the rear or not. But either way, I don't think I'd be able to play any Kostecki anyway. It's not like he's in junk equipment. He's in the 33 car with RCR. And obviously Kyle Busch has been able to get the job done in RCR this year. But there's the other drivers around him. You have Daniel Suarez, Ross Chastain, Cedric Logano, Blaney, Byron. Those other place differential guys. I just have a hard time seeing myself get the Kostecki. So probably going to be passing there. Daniel Suarez, 8500 bucks. He's starting on the pole. And while the pole setter can always be a bit scary at road courses, Suarez is a good road course guy. He's got a really fast car. Might be using the same car that Shane used at the Chicago Street Course and then Run America when he got his win last year. And if he is, I mean, that car is super fast. We will see. Do like this piece off from Suarez. Not sure if I'll get there in cash games yet or not. I have not run my numbers, but... I'm not against it. I'm on the fence as of right now. And I do think you can play with other drivers starting up front just because he's so cheap. It's not like you're playing Suarez and Redick at 10000 a pop. I think that would be a mistake. But when you can get a guy that's really cheap, I don't mind it. So, like Suarez in all formats, but a little bit iffy on cash right now just because pull sitter can be a bit scary. And there's other good plays in the slate with a lot more place differential upside like Dinger, Bush, or Hamlin, and William Byron. But if you can stay up front all day, get the laps leg, get the fast laps, and get a good finish in the top five, that should be able to get it be enough to get the job done at that price point. And then you have his teammate Ross Chastain at 8300 bucks. If we were seeing Ross at a road course at this price point last year, starting in 21st, I mean, he would probably be the highest owned driver on the slate. But his teammate Suarez definitely looks really good. So I don't think we can write off Ross Chastain here. I know he hasn't been as good at the road courses as he was last year, but it's not like he's been awful either. Talking average finish of 12th, running position of 13.4, as a top five, two top tens. So I'm not against Ross Chastain. I mean, he had a fast car in practice. Obviously tailed off a little bit, but 14th and 12th. I mean, if he can be a borderline top 10 guy, it's like, you got to keep in mind, we're not paying 10K for Chastain. He's priced as a mid-tier driver here. And I think he's going to be a little bit better than a mid-tier guy. So I think Chastain definitely makes some sense. Austin Sindrick, 8,100 bucks. Another guy where if he was 8,100 bucks last year, starting in 20th, I mean, I'd be all about it. But Sindrick's had a really bad year. Fast in practice, though, was seventh in the one lap, 
If you look at his numbers of road courses this year, it's not terrible. Average finish of 12.3, running position of 20.1, two top 10s, two top 15s. Like, he's a good road course racer. I think he's fine. I, I think I'd probably prefer Ross Chastain, but I would say they're both pretty similar plays. Just funny, last year, I mean, if he's at this price at a road course where he's starting, both him and Ross Chastain, the ownership would be absolutely crazy. I'm not sure what it's going to be like yet, though, but definitely wouldn't be what it, what it is last year. Uh, driving on the 7K range, we have uh, Joey Logano. Lots of good drivers here, too. I mean, Logano, Blaney, McDowell, Gibbs, Harvick, all seem very cheap this weekend. But we'll just kind of group Logano and Blaney together. I would say they're both pretty much the same play. If I had to pick one, I mean, if you're looking at how they performed this year, Logano's been a bit more consistent. He has a top five, two top tens. Ryan Blaney has some pretty bad luck at the road courses this year. So I would probably see it slightly into Logano. Plus, he offers me two more spots, but... I'm not super excited about either. I would rather get the Michael McDowell, honestly. He's at 7,500 bucks, a little bit more expensive on Fandle. He's starting in fourth, good track position, but arguably might have the best car in the field. If you're looking at practice, he was first in the one lap and first in the 10 lap. I know it's not my favorite data to use. We don't have too much this week. I'd really like to get a hand on the lap by lap data and see what the whole story is. And plus with the groups being different, McDowell was in the faster group. But overall, I mean, he's been one of the best drivers of road courses in the next-gen car. If you're looking at this year, three top 15s, two top 10s. Looking at overall in the next-gen car, he's been absolute money. 9.8 running position, five top fives, seven top 15s, which is tied for the most of all drivers. So yeah, I can give it some McDowell in tournaments. I'm hoping he's going to be a little bit lower than he should. But once again, just another mispricing on a road course by DraftKings and Fandle. Because McDowell is honestly one of the best drivers at them. And he should be right around where Chris Buescher is. So you're getting him at about a $2,000 discount. Ty Gibbs, $7,400. Really cheap on a fan, though. I do like him over there. He's starting in 10th. Looks like he is a fast car as well. Top five speeds in practice. And we have seen him run well at the road courses. I believe he was another guy at the Chicago Street Course that was running well. Then ended up getting screwed again when the field got flipped and really couldn't make his way back up. But he's had two top 10s at the road courses this year. And he's been in the top 20 every single time. So I think he's another fine tournament play. And if McDowell and Gibbs are going to be lower owned than guys like Cindric, Chastain, Logano, Blaney, I think it makes way more sense to be overweight on those two than it would be the other guys that might have some more ownership with slower cars. Then we have Kevin Harvick, 7300 bucks. He is free on Fando. Another guy that's going to soak up a ton of ownership. I get it. I mean, if you're looking at the numbers, average finish 17th this year at road courses, has two top 15s. The four team just does not really make mistakes. They just get the job done. They take their finish. And they're probably going to be a top 15 contender at the end of the day. Thing is, though, it doesn't look like he's going to have a fast car. He was 29th in practice. Now, it's hard not to like him at that price point for where he's starting because you do not need Carvick to be a top 10 guy. If he finishes 20th, starting in 38th at a $73 price point, like this is, it's like playing Eric Jones any other week starting in 27th and you kind of hope he finishes 19th and you're happy. So, Harvick starting all the way back in 38th, you do not need much to hit value. And especially over on Fandle, he is free. He's $6,000. So, as long as Harvick doesn't wreck out or anything, he should be a top 20-ish guy by the end of the day, and that's not going to kill you. So for cash games, yeah, I like Kevin Harvick for cash, but I do like McDowell and Gibbs a lot for tournaments. Uh, Kamui, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He's starting in 28th. He is on Yoda, part of the 2311 racing. Was not fast in practice, was not fast in qualifying, so I have my doubts on him, and I don't really have anything else to base it off of. So that's what we got, and I don't really think he's going to bring a ton of speed, so I prefer just about everybody else priced around him. Like Logano, Blaney, I mean, I pretty much just like all these guys better. So I don't think I'm going to have too much Kamui. Like, I don't see why I'd play Kamui when I can just play Kevin Harvick, who I would trust a lot more. <laughs> then dropping down to the 6K range, you have Brad Keselowski, $1,600. He's starting back in 22nd. Not really the best road course guy these days. Look at his numbers so far this year, running position of 25th, average finish right on par with that, and one top 20, probably going to be passing on Keselowski. Bowman, I do like. He does bring speed at road courses. And if I can get a Hendrick car at below $7,000 priced around guys like Jensen Button and Chase Briscoe, this is just a mispricing in my opinion because Bowman's not a bad road course guy. He was fast in practice, fast in qualifying, has two top fives, five top 15s, an average finish just inside the top 15 at road courses. So, I mean, it's 6,800 bucks. I'll take Bowman all day. I think he's a fine tournament guy. I just don't understand why he's that cheap. I don't think there's really any reason that guys like Kamui and Really, even Harvick. I mean, Harvick's not the best road course guy either. I, I just think he's way too cheap this weekend, and I'll take that. Chase Briscoe, 6700 bucks. He's starting in 13th. Thought he'd be a lot better at road courses than he was heading into the Cup Series when he was in Xfinity. Hasn't really panned out to be anything too special. Next-gen car, running position of 17th at road courses. Has four top 15s, but only one top 10 finish. 
Not really a big fan of Briscoe. I'd rather play Bowman personally. I mean, you can't rule him out completely because this is a very ugly range. So you might get a sprinkle of Briscoe, but that's really about it. Jensen Button starting all the way back in 31st. Has average finish on 19th with the road courses when he does run. I know it's not a large sample size, but running position of just inside the top 25. I don't think Button may be the worst play out there, but I don't think he's the best either. I mean, he was 30th in practice. I mean, you can make a case he's better play than Briscoe just because of the starting position, but I feel like Briscoe will have a lot more speed than Button. He definitely has the track position. But Wallace, arguably one of the worst road course racers out there. He's starting a 19th. I know he had a good finish last year at the Indy Road Course, but absolute chaos. Harrison Burton finished in the top five, I think, if that tells you anything. So I don't really see us having too much interest in Bubba. Eric Jones is starting in the back in 36. He's 6300 bucks. Super slow in practice. I mean, Legacy just looked terrible overall. Now, if you're looking at Jones this year at the road courses, it hasn't been anything too pretty. It does have a top 20, but again, we're talking about a guy starting in 36 at a track where we've seen lots of chaos. So if he just finishes like 24th or 25th, shoot, I'll even take a 27th. I'll, I'll take it at $6,300. You don't need much from Eric Jones. And just looking at the starting lineup, there's a lot of guys with big names that are starting in the very back. So I could see a lot of people going like William Byron, Kevin Harvick, Eric Jones is three of the like cores and cash just because of the starting position. And I would understand why. I mean, I don't think they're going to be super fast. William Byron should be fast, but he is the pass through penalty. So all these guys have their own vices this weekend. So it definitely makes for a very interesting slate this week. Austin Dillon in 27th used to be awful at road courses, kind of righted the ship a little bit. Although this year hasn't really been too hot running position just inside the top 30 with one top 20. So I'm not too excited about that. Haley, I like Haley as a tournament option. He's starting in 15th. Road courses this year. I would finish a 14th. Did get a bit skewed, though, just because of the uh, high finish at the Indy Road Course and kind of got lucky with the field getting flipped. But overall, he's really not that bad of a road course guy. If you look at the next-gen car, it's an eight-race sample size. Talking about an average finish of 14.5, two top fives, four top 15s. Don't think he's the worst play in the world and should have some more speed than guys like Austin Dillon, Eric Jones, and Bubba Wallace. I don't, I don't hate it. Dropping into the 5K range, Todd Gillen, 5,900 bucks. He's starting a 23rd. Was really fast in practice. Ended up getting into the gravel. And then when he was making his quality laps, definitely looked like he couldn't handle the car as much. So I'm a little bit concerned there. But if all is good to go, I don't think Gillen's a bad play starting a 23rd. Should be lower on than guys like Eric Omarola, Ricky Stenhouse, Ryan Priest because of the starting position. But I think that makes it more interesting for tournaments. And I think he's going to have a little bit more speed. But we do have to make sure that the uh, car is not completely trashed because he... He was struggling a little bit on the handling, but he was P3 in the one lap in practice. Keep in mind, Eric Amarola, awful at road courses. P33 in practice, don't really have much interest there. Mike Rockefeller might be the worst car on the track. Ricky Stenhouse is in 34th. He's also not a very good road course guy, but if you're just looking for a cheap option with place differential, I don't hate filtering in some Stenhouse, but I'm not excited about it. Uh, Ryan Priest, kind of in the same boat there. LaJoy starting too far up for me. Harrison Burton got lucky with his finish last year, so don't look too much into that. Lolly, no thank you. Ty Dillon, no. Bullocky, no. So really the only cheap guys I'd like down here in the 5K range would be, I guess, Ryan Priest, Stenhouse, and Gillen, and that's just because of the starting positions, really. But with that being said, guys, that's all I got for you this week. I hope you did enjoy, and even if you didn't, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the live stream tomorrow around noon Eastern. I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all next time.